As you know, Ayatul Kursi is one of the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 255. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned it this in Hadith that this is the greatest verse of the entire Quran. You take all the verses, this is the greatest verse. And which one is the greatest surah? Yes. <coughs> surah Al-Fatiha from uh, Bukhari. <coughs> And in fact, this was uh, narrated by uh, uh, in, in, in another hadith about uh, uh, Ubay ibn Kaab, radiallahu anhu. Prophet Muhammad sallam asked him, uh, which is the greatest verse directly? So he said, and Allah and his messenger know the best. He asked him uh, a couple of times, and he continued the same thing, uh, answering the same thing. And then finally he said, it is Ayatul Kursi. And Prophet Muhammad sallam was very happy, and he congratulated him, you know, that... Um, uh, May Allah bless your knowledge and you know he, he was very happy to hear and he later on became a very famous Sahabi in the Quran. So he knew that answers and Prophet Muhammad was very happy about it. <clears throat> and also we see some hadith mentioning about that uh, this Ayatul Kursi, it has uh, two lips and it, it glorifies, it has a tongue as also, tongue and two lips and it glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the foot of the throne. That's how this is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, and uh, how it is, how it looks, and in what way it happens, we don't know. Uh, this is the matter of ghaib, but all, Prophet Muhammad mentioned it that way. It has a tongue and two lips, uh, and also uh, another thing about uh, this one. Oh, what's so special about this verse, though? <clears throat> Why is this considered the greatest verse? The, the, the reason is, you know, you take all the verses of the Quran. This particular verse, it the way it mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, the, the great names, and the style that it presents, that is really, really amazing. It's very majestic and it really, uh, it really uh, has an immediate impact on the listeners. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this, and He Himself made this particular verse as the greatest verse. Then it also negates the qualities of imperfection. It has both positives and removal of negatives. That's why it makes that uh, you know the other verses are also there but not to this much effect that's why it, uh, it is called the one of the best uh, it is the best verse <clears throat> throne throne the verse of the it also yeah and uh, there are some specific times when we uh, are, are required to recite this ayatul kursi it has some special benefits special blessings let's look at what uh, exactly those blessings are <clears throat> and in another hadith in sahih bukhari uh, it is mentioned to the effect that when a person recites this ayatul kursi when he is going to bed what happens allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appoint an uh, a guardian over that person and also, he will be protected from shaitan. From shaitan. Uh, the, 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 the shaitan will not be able to approach him till the morning. So that's the, the benefit. And shaitan, actually shaitan is always with us. He's always whispering. He flows in our blood. That is always your, uh, you know, together with you. But there are other shayateen. They like to harm you for no reason or just want to harm you because you are a good Muslim or anything. They, the reason can be anything. And uh, some of the time, sometimes they, you know, you might be uh, getting into their way and they might want to harm you. So things like that happen. So this is a very good protection. Uh, and also, it's also a good protection, especially when you want to wake up for Fajr Salah. This really helps, Ayatul Kursi. So that, that has also has an effect. We will get into what other benefits it has, especially when waking up uh, uh, the verses which are very effective. <clears throat> so that's why you, you'll get like a bodyguard there, right, when you're sleeping. You can't see, but perhaps it's like an angel. And also, uh, while entering the house, this is something which we should uh, recite. Specifically mention in the hadith that while entering the house, you should recite this. What will happen if you recite it while entering? Shaitan, some hadith mentioned, Shaitan will leave the house farting, farting like a donkey. It really cannot withstand it. And you know, when, when Shaitan is away from uh, the house, it, it gives you more opportunity. And uh, if Shaitan is inside your house, 
you will notice that your sins are getting more and the, the relationship between families is getting like uh, bad, worse. So that, if shaitan is there, that these are the problems that happen and the blessings continue to decrease. So best way, whenever you enter your house, recite Ayatul Kursi and these blessings will start piling up in your house. <clears throat> and also, after the Salah, uh, we know that there are certain Adhkar after we uh, complete our fourth Salah in the Masjid or wherever you pray. Immediately after you uh, finish your prayer, uh, with, together with other Adhkar, you have to recite Ayatul Kursi as well. What will happen if you do that? If you recite uh, after every fourth Salah, <coughs> Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said that if you do that after each fourth Salah, then there is nothing, there is nothing standing between you and Jannah except the death. Straightforward. Uh, Jannah is yours. So keep reciting it, never miss it. And you know what happened? Basically the meaning here is that if you, it's like if you're saying there's nothing between you and uh, Jannah, it basically means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things so easy for you that it, the Jannah, getting into Jannah is very easy. You know, it's not like saying, oh, I will enter Jannah, I will try this and try that. No. Trying and striving hard in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not easy unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for you. So this is one thing by which it, it becomes uh, very easy for you. Yeah. <clears throat>